When you turn this raised hood on, it's gonna depressurize the house. We'll turn that on. <laughs> the front door open. Today we're talking about balanced ventilation, which you guys have heard me talk a lot about. And there's a good reason why we talk a lot about that. Houses today are getting tighter and tighter. Code is requiring it more. People are using foam, which provides some level of tightness. And builders like me, who try to build tight and incorporate these methods developed through building science, you know, we're achieving higher levels of tightness than even foam can get it really becomes more important to have a balanced ventilation plan in your home. Because if you don't, when you turn on bathroom fans or the laundry fan, or especially the range hood, you're depressurizing the house. And that depressurization, tight home, in a loose home, you don't notice it as much, but there are things going on in the walls which are gonna have a bad result over time. In a tight home, you are gonna notice things a little bit more obviously, which we're gonna show here in just a minute. It's going to be kind of fun and entertaining. I've always wanted to show this situation here. Let me just talk real quick about how we handle balanced ventilation with the bathroom fans, and then we'll move on to the range hood. You guys have heard me talk about ERVs. Anyone that's following building science on YouTube knows that we use ERVs. The whole purpose, I mean, there's a couple of benefits there, but really the main purpose is that it provides balanced ventilation instead of a fan trying to move things one way. So when we use an ERV, we'll just take a look over here. There are no traditional fart pans in a home. So in this home, you'll see, again, no traditional fart pan, only an ERV exhaust. We'll go over here, we'll show this one, and then I'll show you the buttons. ERV exhaust port there, and then in here we've got one in the little toilet closet. So instead of a fan switch, we have buttons. The way this ERV works, let's go over here to the controller. Uh, I like to have a controller. I believe this is not totally necessary, but I'm all about having control of my home. Having the controller there is good. This, In this particular case, it was a Fantech ERV. This is so that I can manually control the ERV. So what's happening if you don't touch this, which by the way, I recommend to most people that they don't touch this because when we build a home, we'll leave it in an ideal setting. That ideal setting is that this ERV is ventilating 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the time. But it's doing it at a low rate, low speed. And when you push the buttons in the bathroom, it switches it into high speed for 20 minutes or depending on the system, whatever you set that up for. So instead of running a traditional one-way fan in the bathroom, you're really, you're just boosting the ventilation system for a period of time. The way that ventilation system is working, ERV is exhausting out of the bathrooms and laundry or wherever you cut the exhaust ports, but it's bringing in outside fresh air at the exact same rate, so it's completely balanced. No depressurization happening. Those two air flows will cross paths, but not touch, so that energy is exchanged, so that incoming air is gonna be dehumidified and conditioned to an extent. From that point goes through the return of the air handler. As long as that's running, it's gonna be conditioned even more. And then from there, it's distributed using the existing ductwork, distributed the whole house. So because of that, it's only pulling. We can walk back to the stove. We'll talk about that in a minute. Exhaust ports are only in certain locations. The ventilation really is whole house ventilation because the fresh air is being distributed everywhere and then the air flows through to these other spots to get exhausted. So the air is literally moving through the whole house. So it's whole house ventilation. And we will go back to this bathroom here because I wanna show, because that air moves through the whole house, sometimes we're using that to help condition spaces. Um, by the way, 
This house, we built this three, four years ago. It's my previous home. You'll notice that this bathroom, believe it or not, has no supply. It's only got that exhaust port. The reason why is because this bathroom is in the middle of the house, so it's completely surrounded by air conditioned space, even above, because the attic above is fully conditioned. We, when we did the load calculation, the load of this room is so tiny that any amount of supply would have been actually too much. This bathroom would have been cold. But this is a method that we use often. As long as you have an exhaust port, this is constantly moving air and replacing the air in the bathroom. This bathroom is constantly at the same temperature and humidity levels as the rest of the house. I mean, obviously if you shower, humidity is going to spike up, but when you shower, of course, you're going to push this button in here, which will, you know, help get rid of that humidity faster. But other than that, it's same temperature and humidity as the rest of the house because we're constantly exchanging this air without the need of a supply. Um, I started this video because I really want to talk about this hood. The hood has to do with balanced ventilation, so I kind of had to give you the whole balanced ventilation story and why it matters, right? Okay, so in, in this particular house, like I said, this was several years ago when we built it. I didn't have the team that I have now, the team I had at the time. These things were a challenge. They never did hook up the makeup air uh, correctly for this range hood. By the way, so ERV, the whole house ventilation, that's a separate system than your range hood. Your range hood is usually more powerful, has more CFM, so you really need a whole separate makeup air system that's dedicated just for that. And we do that in, in a few different ways. Most of our spec homes will get what we call a simple makeup air damper. You could actually, if you, up there, you might even see the damper through that vent there. Right behind that grill is a makeup air damper. That's ducted right there. And we've got a filter in there so that we're kind of filtering that outdoor air as it comes in. That is the most basic way of bringing in makeup air. It's a passive system. It's wired to the range hood. So the range hood has a flow switch. So when you turn the range hood on, that damper opens and passively allows outdoor air to come in. It's straight outdoor air, hot and humid, but it's not constant, right? You're, you're, that's happening while you're cooking and when you're done cooking, that air is gonna be picked up by the system and conditioned. If you don't do that, let's just show what's gonna happen. Because in this particular case, like I said, the crew I had before, this stuff was a challenge. They didn't hook it up correctly. What we've been doing while we were living here, just because as a home builder, our own home is always last priority. We're working on other people's homes all the time. But we literally opened the back door when we use the range hood, which is the same exact thing, by the way. We had a screen on it. It's, it's the same thing. If you're passively letting outdoor air in. Now, if we didn't do that, when you turn this range hood on, it's gonna depressurize the house. Make sure you get that front door in the, in the, in the front door open. I love showing that because it's an excellent demonstration of that depressurization happening. So it really actually happens. It's not when this door isn't locked, this is what's keeping it closed. And um, it's just a pull, you just pull it open. Yeah, anyways, just wanted to show that because like I said, it's, it's a great example of how homes get depressurized. This house happens to be super tight. It was actually the first I built some levels of tightness before this. This is the first house where I actually put a lot of effort into it. And uh, this house came at like under one ACH 50. Effects like that are gonna be a little bit more obvious. Now, if I didn't have that door opening or I didn't open the back door or I don't have a makeup air damper or something like that, what happens is that air is gonna find the path of least resistance it's gonna to try to come in the house somewhere. In many homes, not my homes, but in many homes, that path of least resistance could be at the windows. When a lot of builders are flashing their windows, I've talked about this before, you've heard me say it, they're not covering the bottom corner of that window opening. 
they'll cut a moist stop in there, which isn't a good product. They'll cut the corner and leave a hole under that bottom corner. That might be the path of least resistance if, if everything else is tight. Or it might be, um, maybe, I mean, around here, be builders don't flash very many things at all. So it could be pipes and wires. You know, those things don't get sealed up. So you could have outdoor air coming in through those penetrations. It's humid air in this, in this area. It's going to condensate somewhere that happens over a period of 20 years. That's going to accumulate and cause some damage. That's why we do balanced ventilation. All right. So that kind of wraps up my explanation and balanced ventilation and this demonstration of how a house actually depressurizes. Before I go, I just want to tell you where we're at now with this house and what we're about to do. So I actually had my current crew who does know what they're doing came and they replaced the makeup air because even if the makeup air before was working, it actually was only a six inch. It wouldn't have been big enough. So they replaced it. They put a 10 inch in here and the whole thing is all set, except they couldn't run the wire to the range hood because this attic space is super tight in there. So we're, that's why I'm here now is we're about to figure out how to get that wire ran from that damper to the range hood through the attic. Once I do that, we'll be done. And this will actually work properly for the next owner. That's it guys. We'll see you next time on Scott's Rebuilds.